Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, it's very sad that we cannot uh, meet in person this year, uh, but uh, at least like this this way of uh, of the virtual conference uh, hopefully will work for you. And I'm here to talk about the SDK uh, that we have uh, for for the online. Uh, so some short stuff about me. So I'm leading the the development of the Collabora Online. Uh, I have some 20 years of uh, office uh, productivity software development, uh, so um, so like hopefully uh, you do not have to go into much of the details here. And uh, yeah, uh, with the team, like we are trying to uh, to get you the features uh, that that you want and need, and uh, make the the software like uh, very fit for your needs. Um, you have already heard in the previous presentations like uh, about Collabora Online, but let me just summarize it uh, just once again. So it is a uh, uh, Linux-based uh, uh, server-side software, and uh, it is uh, just uh, like focused on the editing, on the editing only. Uh, so the editing and collaboration between uh, like multiple people. Uh, but to be able to do some something really good, uh, it needs uh, integration into uh, like other software. Um, usually uh, the uh, EFSS um, of some kind or uh, some other solution that actually like uh, takes the content uh, on their side and allows the user to manage that. And then we will live uh, in the iframe uh, that uh, like where you can uh, where you can uh, like put the people and, and like let them collaborate or edit documents and everything. So uh, so like here we are uh, integrated into the web app. Um, here is the document storage which is uh, like usually like your solution that uh, that like um, allows the uh, allows the the download and upload of the documents and there is the server part of the collabora online uh, that uh, that uh, makes uh, makes sure that the editing is is possible and and like actually renders uh, the the pictures of the of the document that are sent into the iframe as uh, Miklos has pointed out in in his uh, previous presentation um, but like that was the basic setup so the setup it can be of course like much more complicated so uh, like there of course is like multiple users there can be some kind of load balancer and this load balancer can like talk to to many of the collabora online workers uh, the machines that that actually do the, the do the work and then these of course uh, uh, can talk to the EFSS uh, that is clusters as well uh, either from the same load balancer or from from another one uh, so this uh, is uh, to like provide the high availability and the balancing of the service so that like none of these is kind of overloaded but like it allows also uh, the possibility uh, to have it managed uh, in just much more convenient way uh, uh, for example uh, via kubernetes on the client um, you want to have some uh, some uh, some some additional features as well, most probably. Uh, so in case like it doesn't fit you to have uh, uh, like all the features in there, like you want to disable parts of the UI. Uh, in some cases, like you want to adapt the 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 behavior, for example, like disable copy paste or you know, stuff like that. And of course, in some scenarios, you want to add uh, additional stuff like watermarks uh, for the secure view. Uh, you want to have some uh, some users just read only uh, when they are only uh, only looking at the document uh, uh, where the, the, some somebody else is editing and, and stuff like that. And for that, uh, like we have the SDK. So the SDK is supposed to lead you through the integration process and uh, show you first of all the opportunities that you have when you are integrating into your solution but also uh, like is there to help you with the code pieces that like you can copy uh, directly into into your integration and build it on top of these uh, code snippets so that uh, so that um, it is much easier for you to develop the the, the features from scratch and uh, previously uh, this information that is in the SDK where um, where uh, pre uh, where like private mostly private 
but then uh, we decided uh, earlier this year that it will be much better to open it up, uh, not only to allow others to integrate into their solutions, uh, but also like to have it uh, indexed uh, by search engines and uh, um, like make it easier for you to search uh, than, than like when it is behind in the button portal only. So this is the, the starting page, how it looks like when you uh, when you go to the SDK collaboronline.com. Uh, you have uh, some links to the most used uh, uh, parts of the of the software. You can search uh, inside that, uh, but of course, like you can you can just just go through the pages there, and uh, like this is uh, this is what you see when you go go through the pages here. So it all starts with the installation guide. Uh, so there are some very easy methods how to how to um, how to install Collabor online. It starts with the uh, packages for various Linux distributions. So uh, it is usually some some kind of like adding it uh, adding the new repository uh, into uh, on on the machine and then uh, like perform some some updates. Of course, we can use the the dockers. Like there are some. Um, uh, pre-built Docker instances that you can just download from the Docker Hub. But uh, uh, when you are using the supporting Collabora Online, uh, you usually want to build your own Docker uh, from the supported packages and uh, yeah, run the image. So uh, of course, if you want to go further, um, you can uh, you can use, for, uh, for example, the Kubernetes uh, for, the, uh, for easier setup and load balancing. Uh, we described like uh, the YML files there uh, that uh, that you can you can try yourself uh, to like create your setup. Um, uh, how to, uh, it it is again uses uh, the Docker uh, like behind the scenes so that uh, so that the, the pods uh, that are using in Kubernetes are the Docker instances. And of course, the last step here in the installation guide uh, guide is like how to uh, how to uh, add uh, some some advanced scenarios uh, into configuration. So most probably you will want to use some reverse proxy uh, so that uh, like inside your network uh, you do not have to have uh, have to use SSL. It's only like in the uh, in the uh, like outside facing uh, facing part of the uh, of the solution. Um, but also you might want to, to set up some load, load balancing. So we have examples for AHA proxy and engines, uh, but also some, some general rules, uh, uh, like how to, what to do, like if you are using something, something different, like F5 or, or anything. And uh, the next thing that we have in the SDK is uh, how to integrate uh, the basic functionality into your web app. Um, in most cases, it consists uh, from th three steps here um, using the WAPI Ally protocol. Uh, so first of all, like you have to have the possibility to uh, to uh, like uh, download and upload the files and also provide some information about these files. So this uh, information about the files is called check file info and then there is get file and put file for the uh, for the download and upload. Uh, then you need to to like um, update your web app uh, in a way that yeah like you create space for the iframe with Collabora online and you want uh, to uh, to like set up the connection um, so that uh, so that the iframe is served and and uh, contains uh, contains the uh, the UI and uh, the edited document and the last thing. Um, that you want to do before you, you release your integration is of course provide the authentication. Um, we um, like uh, need to have a token that is agreed between uh, between your solution, but between, between your your web app and Collabora Online. But then from that on, uh, the the token is being used for further editing. You can also uh, set uh, some time to live uh, for this uh, for this token. So like uh, to to be more secure, like you want to. You might want to uh, to renew the, to the token uh, from time to time during the uh, the session uh, or during the editing session. Uh, the SDK also contains the step uh, step by step details um, that describe like how you should uh, go um, from like the very 
basic steps to uh, like uh, building the full integration and uh, also contain uh, the examples. Um, um, examples uh, for Node.js, uh, for PHP and uh, basic HTML, Python with Django and React.js. Uh, I was talking about the uh, advanced integration bits. Uh, so some of the uh, advanced integration bits contain uh, are some some like uh, additional stuff on top of the Bopi protocol itself. Uh, so uh, for the check file info, which is giving the information about the file, uh, there are possibilities to hide uh, or disable um, some some of the UI elements like the print button or print menu entry. Uh, save, uh, export, uh, then it is possible to uh, define user's avatar uh, for the comments and, and change tracking. So like when you, uh, when you are commenting in the document, uh, it then shows uh, not, not only the name of the person, but also, uh, also like uh, whatever, whatever your solution uses as the avatar for, for the people. And uh, uh, possibility to, for example, disable the inactive messages. So when the editing goes inactive, like we have uh, an overlay with some message that like the, this document is, uh, ne, that the, the user actually like, didn't touch the document for, for a long time. So uh, so it is not, uh, not uh, doing updates if somebody else is editing the document, but like you can define your own way of, of showing this information. So you can disable this uh, these inactive messages that we provide and use of your own. Then uh, for uh, being able to, to work uh, better on the server side, we have some put file headers uh, in addition that uh, inform like if uh, the same that it was performed was an autosave or if it was forced by the user from the UI. So you can, for example, create new versions of the document based on this um, and based uh, like if, 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 you, if you want to, to somehow like handle, handle it speci uh, specifically. Then uh, like by default, uh, we do not, uh, we do not uh, provide locking of the document instead of uh, that we work with the document timestamps and uh, uh, in that case that like the document was uh, modified behind the scenes by some upload or no or anything then uh, we decide what to do so if the document was inactive it is easy when it becomes active like it, it's just reloaded it is of course harder like when there are some kind of uh, um, uh, some kind of uh, no conflicts, uh, then we warn about the conflicts. And uh, uh, there is even possibility uh, for some like uh, more real time uh, communication between the integration and the uh, iframe inside. We are using uh, so called uh, so called post, post messages for that, and uh, that is API for uh, like bi directional uh, communication between the collaborator online iframe and the web app. Uh, so we can notify about the users that they were joining or you know, or leaving the document. Um, we can uh, we these post messages are also uh, used for uh, for handling of uh, insert image, for example. So if you want to allow people to insert image uh, directly, like from uh, from your storage, uh, it has to be done specifically in your in your integration. Uh, but it is possible via these post messages. And of course, it is possible to change the UI mode. Uh, so uh, currently in Collabora uh, online, like there are two modes. There's the classic with the menu and toolbar, and there's notebook bar that is, uh, uh, that is much more resemblant of, uh, of current Microsoft Office versions. Of course, uh, like this also allows to uh, working with the versions of the document. So like if you want to uh, uh, to allow the user to switch to some older version of the document with read only, um, you can do this uh, uh, via the post messages. And there's the uh, Python scripting API, which is uh, like very advanced thing. If you want to uh, to have some additional functionality uh, in your documents bound to some specific buttons that you would add into the into the UI via the post messages, it is uh, also possible. Uh, but I don't think uh, I need to go into details here. Very interesting for you might be the UI integration. 
so it is possible um, via the post messages to change the UI of the Collabora online at remove hide buttons, uh, but like you can also theme the entire Collabora online. So you can uh, you can set uh, like tell um, in your integration what should be the accent color, what should be the disabled color, um, and these things. And then the Collabora Online UI adapts accordingly. So then, like when you are browsing in the menus, you will see it in the same color as your web app that is integrating the Collabora Online. And the last uh, but not least thing that uh, that is described in the uh, in the SDK is the conversion as API, uh, which is very useful uh, for some previews um, that you might be using in your um, EFSS. Uh, so uh, this conversion API allows you to just upload the document to uh, to Collabora Online, and as a result, get the uh, the get it in the format that you want. Uh, it is very useful for uh, PDFs, uh, either for printing or for some previews, but also for thumbnailing. So like you can have the output format as PNG, and then use that directly in your integration for the thumbnails, like next to the next to the document name. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening. And as a reminder, sdk.collaboraonline.com is where you will find all this information. You can see the details there. And of course, if you are missing any information there, please do let us know and we will be very happy to update it, to update it and add the info there. Thank you so much.